So let's talk about um, some of these like main ideas that come out in Genesis. You mentioned like the covenant, and then you have like kind of like the division between like one through eleven and twelve through fifty. You got all these like really interesting things going along in the book of Genesis. So what are like some of like the main ideas that are in the book of Genesis that you bring out? Obviously, as a scholar who's written commentaries and spent your life kind of studying this book. To me, the main idea is about God's presence. Mm. Most people don't see that in Genesis 1 because they get to day seven and it says God rested. And they say, what? Like, what's up with that? That doesn't make any sense. God doesn't get tired. And, and so they just move on. Um, what we easily fail to understand is an ancient Near Eastern connection that when God's rest, they rest in temples. And when God rests, it doesn't mean he disengages, although that word Shabbat in, Gen in seventh day does mean to cease. But Exodus 20 makes it clear that he doesn't just cease, that when he rests, using a different word now, Nuach, when he rests, he is ruling. He is taking mm -hmm. up his rule. He's not resting in a bed. He's resting on a throne as he sits down to take control of this cosmos that he has ordered. I deduce from that, that the very reason God created us was to be in relationship with us and dwell among us. Mm -hmm. And creation is setting that up. And of course we see that in chapter two, where there he is, God's dwelling among the people that he created in relationship with them. That's what he did it for. And then, of course, they lose that relationship in chapter three when they decide that instead of getting on board with God's program for ordering the cosmos, which is what he created them for in his image, they are to work alongside him as vice regents, bringing about order, subduing and ruling. And instead of doing that to bring about his order, they decide, you know, we'd like to do order our own way. Welcome to humanity. And so they end up, you know, God says, basically not in my backyard. And so they end up out of the garden where there they go, trying to do order their way. Order, of course, is connected to God's presence. God is the source of order and the center of order. And therefore, God's presence is a place of his order. That's what the Garden of Eden was. It was all very good. It was ordered. Okay, but now people are trying to establish order on their own. They get to the point in chapter 11, Tower of Babel, where they say, you know, we would like God back down here. Mm -hmm. And so they build the tower. It's not a tower for them to go up. That's been badly misunderstood. Um, ancient Near Eastern material makes it clear that ziggurats were for gods to come down and establish their presence. And that's what the people want. They would love to have the presence of God, but the problem was the presence of God is supposed to be so that God's name might be honored. They want to do it so that, you remember the passage, their name might be honored. They're still doing it on their own terms for their own benefits, not on God's terms for what he wants it to be. So God rejects that initiative. So that's where Genesis 1 through 11 gets you from setting up order, from people choosing their own path to order, showing how badly that went, including the flood, the attempt to bring God's presence back and God rejecting that initiative. That's the launch into chapter 12 because chapter 12 now represents God's counter initiative. Okay, is he going to establish a relationship based on human benefit, chapter 11, dwelling among them? No, he's going to establish it, dwelling among them and being in relationship with them on his terms. That's the covenant. Mm. So the covenant and the Tower of Babel are balancing on that fulcrum of how the book of Genesis is laid out. And so the covenant then becomes the key theme for how God is establishing relationship, number one, with the intention of restoring his presence. That part doesn't come in Genesis. That's the carryover to Exodus, 
where we start with God not being present. There they are in Egypt. Where's God? What's up? What's he done? Has he abandoned his people? And then God's presence being gradually revealed, burning bush, plagues, Mount Sinai, all the way through until God descends to take up his residence in the tabernacle, his presence reestablished mm -hmm. with order in his presence set up by means of the Torah, which he gave them on Sinai. So that's kind of how Genesis fits in with Exodus. Mm -hmm with the major theme of God's presence and covenant and how those factors fit together. That was a little long, sorry for the long answer.